Hi, it's The Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's January 21st, 2024. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, occasionally in boxing, and I don't mean to sound melodramatic here, occasionally in boxing the sport gets it right. When boxing gets it right, it's hard to imagine another sport, and I'm a boxing guy, not an MMA guy, it's hard to imagine another sport that can do it better, right? You know the classic fights you have seen, where you're watching the fight and you're thinking, my goodness, this is high-level stuff. You're asking yourself the question of, wow, is someone going to wilt? You're being taken down turns and twists, right, through town, through back alleys. And if your house were on fire and you're watching a classic, well, damn it, you're going to try to milk it as long as you can before you have to leave the house to save your life. Now, let's talk about some of the best fights I have seen in my, um, in my life. And a lot of them had to do with the styles of the fighters. Right? The Thriller in Manila. Ali Fraser. The first Bo Holifield match. Folks, that's a great fight. The first Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn fight. Lennox Lewis against Vitaly Klitschko. The first Ray Leonard against Thomas Hearns fight. For the record, Ray in interviews later in life after he retired admitted that he lost the second fight. Right? The judges disagreed, called it a draw or something like that. Um, just to understand, the first fight is a great fight. I had the privilege this weekend of watching another great fight. You have that privilege too, because it's in my favorites folder right now. It is welterweight champion Natasha Jonas against a champion from the lower weight classes, Michaela Meyer who gained weight to challenge the champ. Now, this is that type of fight. When fights like this go the distance, there's going to be disagreements with your hardcore boxing friends. Right? You'll be at the pub and you'll say things like, yeah, man, it's obvious Ray Leonard won that fight. And then somebody else is going to say, no, no, I, I thought Marvin Hagler did work. You're going to talk about concepts over which we have no consensus. Right? Your buddy might say, hey, Hagler entered the ring with the belt. How could you have a fight that close and give it to the challenger? And, of course, you're going to say lines like, well, hell, Whoever enters the ring with the belt, whoever wins the fight, should leave with the belt. And that conversation is not going to go on for hours. That's going to go on for years. Right? Years. We're still debating. Hagler Leonard. Today, that fight took place in the 80s. Folks, grab a group of your closest friends. Watch this fight. I guarantee you, and I mean it, I guarantee you, if you have five people in a room all into boxing and they watch this fight, I guarantee you there will be people in the room who think that the title should have changed hands. You're going to have people on both sides of the ledger on who won this fight. Now, Michaela Mayer has some obstacles in front of her. Number one is location. 
This fight is in Jonas's backyard. Right? Mayer is far from home. She's in the United Kingdom. Fighting the champ in the champ's backyard. That's a problem. The second problem is possession. Right? Mayer is fighting for Jonas's title. Jonas is the champ. Right? There's that group in boxing, and I'm among them. I plead guilty, who believes that to take the title, you have to beat the champ. In other words, if I'm looking at my scorecard, and I have, you know, close round next to a bunch of rounds, right? close round, close round, then I'm watching the last round, and with 30 seconds left, I still don't know. Who has won the fight, right? I know in my heart that if somebody else says the other person has won the fight, I would have to say, well, you know, I could see it that way. In these photo finish fights where you're looking at that last picture at the tape and you're leaning in and you're saying, who won this fight? To me, the champ should leave with their title. Now, with... All of that said, I believe Mayer should have left the ring with Jonas's title. I think the challenger pulled this off. We'll talk about why. I'll concede you have a Ray Leonard dynamic here. Jonas is the more charismatic fighter. Jonas has the better footwork, and that matters, because these judges have seen a lot of fights. So you're looking at this fight, you see the footwork gap, you see the punching power gap. Jonas is the more blessed puncher. You see the belt gap, right? The women enter the ring, <laughs> the champ, Jonas has the strap right you're a judge and you see the foot speed and you see all these other things you see the back foot capability of jonas right the champ comes in starts fast in the first round lands big shots then she's on her back foot you also see that she's making up her own rules so she's fighting think about this she's fighting an orthodox fighter who has an excellent straight right hand. Excellent. Jonas is a southpaw. What's Jonas doing moving to her left? Moving into Myers' straight right hand. And she pulls it off early. As you watch the first round, and I believe this is one of the reasons why Ray Leonard was so successful. When you see the skills and you realize how skilled Jonas is and you know she's the champ, you start giving her rounds. Right? Mayer, by comparison, looks a little bit predictable compared to Jonas. With Jonas, I don't know if she's going to be moving left. I don't know if she's going to be moving right. I don't know whether she's going to be back foot. I don't know whether she's going to be front foot. Right? She starts the fight. She jumps in the pocket. She looks damn good in the pocket. But then you notice this is that puncher who will give the car keys to the opponent and then will, you know, let the opponent try to track her down in the pocket. So you see the skill level and you're blinded by it. By contrast, you knew Mayer in this fight was going to be on her front foot. You knew she was the pursuer. You knew she was trying to get Jonas over by the ropes. You understood she's trying to throw a left hook to the body, a right hand up top. You knew she's trying to win the fight on volume. You understood they were where they were in the ring because of Jonas playing the role of Matador 
and Mayer being the bull. So, and it's important here, Mayer's 33 years old. Jonas is 39 years old. It matters here. We'll talk about why. But understand, just given the styles here, just given the personalities here, right? Mayer is throwing hard punches. Jonas is moving away. Mayer is prepared to have the punch miss, right? Mayer misses some shots by two, three inches as Jonas moves away because it's more important to Mayer to establish her volume. By contrast, Jonas is a, a sharpshooter, right? Mayer comes in, throws big shots. Jonas doesn't care about the volume. Jonas just wants to land one or two hard shots. Understand, she's the bigger puncher as it is. So these fighters could fight 10 times. Folks, I believe all 10 would be classics. The styles just match up perfectly. Right? It's the slugger with a back foot who is prepared to counter you against the lead, who is more predictable, but who also seems to have a higher running mo motor, seems to have more fearlessness and far more volume. So, early in the fight, it's a jaw dropper, right? Jonas reminds me, and in my eyes, this is high praise. Jonas reminds me of Ray Leonard. It's a jaw dropper. Jonas comes in the pocket and shows you immediately that she can live in the pocket if she wants. Right, she comes in the pocket like Ray Leonard. She's throwing a lot of hooks. They're hard hooks. Like Ray Leonard, Jonas hits harder than you think she hits. Right, there's a size gap between these women. I know one's listed at 5'9", the other's 5'8". They just looked like Mayer was taller. So here you have the shorter fighter come in. Shorter fighter is pinpoint. Not a lot of missed shots. Jonas, pinpoint. Also body shots. You notice Jonas is prepared to chop down a tree. Right, you see here, also Jonas, much better legs, much better balance, much better framing. In other words, Jonas gets deep in the pocket, she looks like a coordinated athlete, just the way she moves. Right, then of course she starts backing away, you see the footwork, right, she's moving left, she's a southpaw moving left, then she's moving right. And you think to yourself, wow, she has this round. I gave Jonas the first round. Right now, full disclosure, I was tied up with another sports event yesterday, uh, an NFL playoff game, and I didn't see this fight live. I heard Jonas won the fight. I thought, well, let me, let me watch this fight. Right, so I'm watching the fight, and after the first round, I said, well, it looks like Jonas is going to win this fight. Right, then we get to round two. And folks, the volume gap is just too pronounced. Right, understand, you don't have to be Ray Leonard to win fights against Ray Leonard. Right, if you're the fighter with more volume, if you're prepared to run red lights, if you aren't discouraged by missing shots by two inches, and you're on your front foot, if you're so persistent that eventually you get Natasha Jonas up against the ropes and you use the opportunity to land a bunch of shots, then baby, it's your round. I thought the second round belonged to Mayer. 
let me just point out, I even put in my notes, Jonas, excellent back foot. In other words, while I was admiring Jonas's work, I thought, look, the fighter landing more shots is Mayer. Right? The fighter who's pushing the issue is Mayer. Now, I understand. For many, that's not enough. They'll say, whoa, uh, the more talented fighter was the other one. Huh? You, you liked her technique better. Right? Jonas is more technical. But folks, a fight involves landed punches, doesn't it? You could fight in a roughneck style and beat a surgical technician, can't you? That's one of the big questions in boxing. Well, let's just say, I thought the first six rounds of this matchup were give and take, right? I thought Mayer holds her own. I thought Jonas shows technical brilliance, right? I thought up close in the pocket, Jonas had the edge, but I thought Jonas was forced on her back foot for much of the first six rounds, right? I thought Jonas had to give up moving to her left because Mayer was too persistent with that straight right hand. So Jonas then starts moving to her right, right? If you're a judge, you would think, oh, wow, well, Mayer has stopped this strategy, hasn't she? But then we get to, and please feel free to disagree with me in the comment section of this video, and it's a 10-round fight. We get to round seven, and I thought age became a factor. I thought the fact that Jonas is 39, I thought the fact that Mayor is six years younger, started to show itself, right? I saw Jonas's fight activity decline. In other words, the heavy body shots of the early rounds where she looks like a puncher just pacing herself, right? A boxer puncher just pacing herself, waiting for openings. I thought from round 7 to 10, they give way to her being on the move more. Getting an eye puffed up. Right? Unable to push the issue on demand. Unable to land the big body shots that she had landed earlier. I thought the younger woman, who had a volume advantage as it was, who seemed to have more energy as it was. I thought the younger woman took over the fight in the last four rounds. Right, round nine, folks, you need to frame that round. Right, spectacular opening. Mayor, great left hook to the body. In other words, Mayor is coming out like a challenger who understands that she's in the champ's backyard, that she's fighting the champ, that the champ started strong and she has to neutralize that and turn the fight, that she has to beat the champ to leave with the belt. I thought Michaela Mayer did just that the last four rounds of this fight, right? There's a lot of resistance. There's a lot of give and take. These two women are warriors. But I thought Mayer is so relentless. I thought that right hand, it's the straight right hand, landed beautifully so many times. And I thought even when Jonas, who is a Ray Leonard technician, gets in the pocket and is pivoting and lands some good counters, I thought Mayer was landing her own share of the shots. Right? I thought Mayer should have gotten the decision. 
the judges did not. Right? In other words, I thought Mayer won this fight by enough of a margin where she should have left with Jonas's belt. Now understand, another classic matchup of styles that will always produce great fights. I did not believe that Katie Taylor did enough in the rematch to leave the ring with Cameron's belt. Here, I thought the challenger pulled it off. What I want to encourage hardcore boxing fans to do here is to watch the fight, not the highlights. Watch the fight, because the fight has an ebb and flow. And give us your verdict in the comment section of this YouTube video. Right, folks, it's January. And I can tell you that this fight, in a year, where we're scheduled to have fights like Fury Usyk, right? The rumor is Peturbi of Bevel, right? In a year where we're scheduled to have big fights. You know, Canelo always gives you a big fight sometime in the year, and you have a lot of guys who want to fight Canelo, right? In this fight year, I have no doubt, this fight was at such a high level, I have no doubt that this fight, will be a fight of the year candidate. Give it a look. It's the welterweight champion, Natasha Jonas, trying to defend her title against Michaela Mayer. Mayer has crossed the Atlantic for the fight. She's ready. She's hungry. She understands the odds. She's there to beat them. Tell us who you feel actually won the fight. Just understand, this is the kind of matchup that will always work. The women can make some tweaks, but understand that Mayer is just naturally more active than is Jonas. Understand, both women are going to fight at their own pace. Jonas doesn't feel a need to try to match Mayer in volume, right? Her game is different. Her game is to strategically land more power shots, including shots to the body. Folks, this is a classic. Please give the fight a watch and give us your views in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.